Hi friends, Mr. Keegan here. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing very good. Whew. Well, you, if you made it through last week's videos, then you actually did some pretty cool stuff. And on this video, I'm not going to talk about, or I'm not going to do a tutorial. What I wanted to do was take a few minutes and talk to you about um, origami paper and some uh, basic origami books that I found very helpful for me as I've learned origami because it, it is a process. It's, it's not something that you just start and you just make these crazy three-dimensional um, folds. Uh, I've done origami for off and on for years. And uh, I really started within the past couple years really kind of <clears throat> getting to it. And within a short period of time, I just wanted to show you what I've been working on recently. And you may have seen some. There, I think there's a picture on my YouTube channel. But um, so this is something that, uh, that I recently made here, a unicorn. And I'll give you a look at what they look like. This is one sheet of paper. See? Now, as you do more and more, this is not something that we're just, I'm not gonna tutorial, go through a tutorial on this, but as you go more and more, you can see there's all sorts of crazy folds on here. Twisting and three-dimensional and pushing here to create a back. Um, so the, I just wanted to show you this to show you possibilities are pretty dang cool. And this isn't even something that uh, is considered super advanced. It is, a little bit more advanced, but it's not super, super advanced. Same thing with um, my little rat. I'm very proud of this guy. I like him. He's a lot of fun. You can see kind of how it works. See that? So there's a lot you can do with origami. It's very neat. But yeah, this is one, one piece of paper. This is a normal size piece of paper. And this is, I'm gonna kind of be going over this, but this is actually a larger sheet of paper and I'll show you those. Um, so <clears throat> I wanted to show you those just so that you can realize the possibilities are endless. And that is just one type. There's so many different types of, of origami. I like folding um, animals. Some people like folding flowers. Some people like folding um, things like the Sonobi units and little things like that. And all that is just something for you to enjoy and explore during this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different types of paper that I use. And I'm going to post in the comment or in the description uh, links to Amazon in case you do, you're interested in actually purchasing them or, or, or um, looking them up. There's So anyways, um, the first one that I use a lot um, just because it's very forgiving and uh, and it's easy to fold is this, let's see what the brand, I don't really know what the brand is, but this is what it looks like. You can see there's a bunch of, it's, it's essentially a thousand sheets in there, but you can buy different amounts. But this paper is double-sided, meaning there's no white on either side. So it, it's limited in what you can do. You can't uh, use the white effect for any of your folds, um, but it is a very forgiving piece of paper, meaning it's kind of just like really thin construction paper. And I use this if I'm trying to do something that I really don't, that I'm just learning, that I'm just trying to figure out, um, but, it's, but it is a good um, type of paper to fold with. Like I said, it's, you can see, I think that, I don't know, they rate them through uh, something called GSM, and this is 80. I don't know what that means. But you can tell how thin it is. But it allows you to, um, to, me to mess up and, and to fix it. Um, also, this paper, because it is not the greatest paper, sometimes is not cut 100% correctly, and it might be like a tiny bit off, which isn't too big of a deal at most times, but sometimes if you're doing something like the the unicorn here, it can be a, a big deal. Um, and that's two-sided paper. And uh, I will I will post a, a link, like I said, in, in the description. The main origami paper that I like to use, and I actually don't know the name of it, uh, it is a single-sided origami paper. This is how it comes. Oh, standard 500 
pieces made in Japan, including gold and silver. So I'll show you what this one is like. Let's grab one. These colors are, are much more vivid. See, this is a red. Let's see if I can show you, if I can find a red here. Hopefully you can see the difference. Do you see the color difference? So this is the double-sided. This is the single-sided. So I like this paper if I'm actually gonna fold, um, if I'm committed to fold something like, like this, this rat, I fold it out of black paper like this. Um, but this is, you can feel the difference when you, when you actually touch it and when you, see how it sounds? I can hear a difference. Not sure if you can. But anyways, another thing that's fun to do with um, origami paper here, I'll grab another piece, is I have these big sheets. This is double-sided. I don't even know if it will, see that? I think it's 12 by 12. It's double-sided. It's kind of like that construction paper, so it's it's not as I, I, I like it because it's, it is forgiving, um, and it's not that it's, it's not that doesn't cost that much, so it's not really a big deal. But um, this is something. This is the size of paper that I use to fold this guy. See that? Pretty cool. So I do like to have some of these on on hand if I'm going to try to make a more intricate. Uh, design because I'll show you one of my kind of failed designs. This was the first unicorn I tried and that was made off of the single-sided paper but you can see it's much smaller. Let's see. And because of that it was hard to get the folds down and you can see there's a difference there. So obviously with the bigger paper it's a little bit easier to um, to manipulate the paper. But, show you, see this? This is my failed unicorn. Looks like a antelope with a horn. But, I mean, it's still cool. I still, I'm still proud of it because I made it and you should be proud of everything you make because you made it. Um, also, I was gonna show two, just two books that, uh, that are that are very that I found very helpful for me and some of you if you kids see this you might actually recognize some of these folds. This any book that you find on Amazon by John Montrall, as long as it says easy, John Montrall, easy. Because he does have a lot of books that are complicated. This actually is a John Montrall fold, but it's a more advanced fold. The ones in here are actually all under 13 steps. You can see these are all the ones that they do. So there's a lot in here and let's see, you guys probably have seen, I've made squirrels for you guys. They're all pretty simple and they start out, it's, it's very easy to understand. Like the very first one here has one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So John Montrall, easy. Another one that I have that is, a, it doesn't say easy, it says beginners, but kind of the same, same thing. Origami Dinosaurs by John Montreal. And this is another one. It's a, it, this one does have more complex things in it, but it starts out very simple. Very, very simple. And one cool thing about these beginner books is they actually teach you practice folds, which is really helpful because you can actually learn how to fold uh, reverse folds, crimp folds, all those things. I haven't really like ever talked about mountain folds and valley folds, but those are things that are covered in here. Um, and, and then when you get into the dinosaur stuff, and he has a lot of different types of books that this is just dinosaur. I think he has, I don't know what the other ones are, but like Jurassic Tree. See some of these make a mountain or a volcano and there's only eight steps. So some of them are very simple all the way up to some of these very comp, well not very, more complex folds like this. Um, but either way, these are just a couple books that I like by John Montreal. Make sure it says easy or I guess beginner would be good too. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm going to, so I'm going to, as I've mentioned like 8 million times, I'm going to put some links in the um, description, but this is just kind of to help you give you some uh, kind of a 
a beginner's reference point. And honestly, anything that you want origami, you can find online. You don't need to buy a book. You could go and type up Spinosaurus or Elamosaurus or Tanistrophius. You could type in Tanistrophius origami and you will find probably a video on YouTube which probably would explain it better than I would. And sometimes the videos explain them better than the books, but there are times where I have to watch the videos and the books. <sighs> All right. So, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I hope this gives you a little bit of some help, and I hope that the um, links will also help you. Uh, keep your head up. Remember, origami's fun. And it's okay to fail when you're doing it because you can just chuck it and start again. That's why I have a thousand pieces because I mess up a lot. Anyway, thank you. Feel free to like, subscribe, and please share. Have a good one. Bye.